Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about Oak Island and the issues that I have with the gold that they are finding there. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk about why I love the show so much. Because it really is such a great show. Um, for one, it's all the, all the details, so... And they do like a really great job of um, uh, documenting exactly what they're doing, why they're doing it, and then also putting that in context with the history of what other people have done before them, and just really well told story-wise. I um, also really love how just how respectful they are to everyone. Um, Every single person I have on that show, they're just like unreasonably respectful to them and and take the time and care to listen to them and actually understand what they're trying to say and like like okay, you think something's over here? Well, let's we'll actually check over there for you and um and like the different contractors that they come on and really uh, do a good job of showcasing how good their work is and, and how cool their technology and stuff is and. And then there's the mystery, right? The, that's what gets everyone. Well, what is it? There's something, something happened. Something had to have happened, but you just can't quite put your finger on it, what it is. Um, and if you figure it out, there might be two million pounds worth of gold in it for you. So <laughs> you got everyone thinking, oh, what's on gone? Where is it? How do we get to it? So... So one of the uh, so the thing I have an issue with is the gold testing that they're doing. So um, before we get into that, I can probably just give a bit of the lay of the land of Nova Scotia and Oak Island and just what exactly is going on here. So, so Nova Scotia. in the rest of the United States and Canada, New Brunswick and Maine beside us. Um, got uh, Sable Island down here, this is part of Nova Scotia. There's uh, historically all the explorers and people in boats coming over. They crash into the sandbar and their horses would escape and then, and then all the horses over time, they've like, created this, like, super breed of the Sable Island horse, and somehow able to, like, live on, like, uh, a kilometer worth of grass out in the middle of the ocean. And, they, like, people live out there and study them and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, and then we've got Cape Breton Island here, and this is, uh, part of Nova Scotia, and sometimes they want to become their own province, but it's just easier to be part of Nova Scotia. Um... It's funny, they say it looks like a, in school they try to tell me it looks like a whale, that's how you like, remember it and recognize it on a map. I guess this is the tail, and then you got like the, the mouth down here, but then like, <laughs> that's not where the fin is. <laughs> To me, it's just, I always think that it's number seven. Lucky number seven. And uh, yeah, Prince of Ryan this year actually is a is its own province, which is funny in its own right. Um, but it's all good. So, the main kind of places people live is, we have the main one here. Uh, Halifax. It's the main, the city. Everyone calls it the city because there's only like one city. Um, and this here, this is famous because it has the world's deepest harbor, world's deepest natural harbor. It's 45 feet deep, roughly. Um, and so, basically, any boat, any size, you can take into that port. Um, 
then Oak Island, this is down here in Mahone Bay, and we call this the South Shore. Um, really pretty beaches, it's all like white sand and stuff. Um, but uh, in places. Um, and there's another main place people settle up on is up in here. Um, then we have Yarmouth, sort of another population center down here. Uh, and then the other big one here is the valley, <clears throat> the Annapolis Valley, all throughout here. And then we have Truro as well, it's kind of a big area. Um, sort of like the main different areas that people have settled. So, <clears throat> gold. That's the whole point of gone, right? We've got to find the gold. So, one of the things they're doing is um, they have this water test that um, Oh, before we get into this, the lay of the land here, this, I forgot the most important, <laughs> the most important feature of the entire landscape, which is the Bay of Fundy, or Fundy, the, um, <laughs> the place where the, the highest tides in the world's at. So, that's right here, and the place is actually measured, um, the high tide spot is actually right up in here along this beach, which is kind of cool because we got like the um, this here is kind of like a flat basin, and so like the water coming in and going through this canal gets all pushed up, and so that when you get this really high, the 45 foot um, tide change, so from the lowest low tide. You put a stick in the water and mark that height, and then you go to the the high tide, and that height is 45 feet of water. That twice a day, every single day through here. Absolutely incredible. And it's a story for another day, but. Uh, there's possibly some connection with the Younger Dryas impact theory here. It may have been what created this basin, actually. But um, it's a long, long story for another day. We're talking about Ireland here today. So, the gold. They have this water test. And so, so the, the claim is that, um, okay, well, first of all, gold doesn't dissolve into water. And they claim that they can uh, test that gold is in the water. And they say they can do this because the gold will naturally flake off little tiny flakes, and this will become suspended in the water. And their test is able to detect this. Um, seems a little fishy to me, but okay, so, like, for one, gold is um, really heavy, like, that's how you end up sorting it and, and refining it, is just by, like, by shaking rocks around, and then the gold's heavy, so it naturally ends up going down to the bottom, and so, like even particles, like with the, when people are doing like um, uh, gold extractions and they're getting like flower gold, there's little particles um, that's still not like floating at the top of the water, it's heavy and it, and it sinks to the bottom. But okay, I guess I can kind of see like if the particles are small enough, then um, Gravity is going to be less of an effect on them, and it's going to be more water buoyancy. So, okay, maybe they can be um, um, suspended 
in the water and that you could detect them. Okay, so let's assume that the gold test actually works. Um, what other problems do we have here? So, for one, would we expect to find gold on Oak Island to begin with? So, I was saying before about where different people have settled, and one of the places here is the South Shore, and the re one of the reasons people have settled here is because it's gold country. This is, there was a, you know, back, like during the 1800s, there's kind of like gold rushes going on everywhere all across the world, and this is one of the places it was happening because there's gold here. Um, so very specifically, there's Gold River. Um, now, the, the rivers in this area, they have like, like brown algae or whatever in them, and so the, the water does look, it tend to sometimes have like a golden color to it, but Gold River is called Gold River also because it has gold in it. The Mi'kmaq, which is the, um, the Aboriginal people that settled in this area, they went to Gold River and they um, used gold there for their jewelry and everyone since. And Gold River happens to flow out right on top of Oak Island right here. And so if we're testing for trace amounts of gold in, in the water, um, you'd almost expect them to be here because of the extra questions for the gold here. And not only that, there's just gold in the land here. There's uh, Um, there's this place here, the Ovens Park, and this here was a gold mine where they um, uh, found gold on the beach, and they they um they mined. Um, into like the bank of the beach and created these holes that look like ovens and so they call it the ovens and so um, today you can go there so here's the holes here um, today you can go there and it's a campground and um, they have like a museum and everything and um, you can rent a gold pan from them and go down to the beach and you can still uh, get gold there. And so this, in relation to where Oak Island is, so here's the ovens and this right here, where my mouse is, and then Oak Island is right here. It's like one bay over, All right? We're in gold country. Okay, so in gold gold deposits, there isn't just gold everywhere. That would be that would be too good, right? There's going to be gold in some places and gold in the others. So, okay, there there just happens to be no gold on Oak Island now. The, the way that would be determined would be through prospecting. Um, now, prospectors, if you're looking for gold, um, you're not using like an XRF gun. You're not um, uh, necessarily like uh, doing uh, chemical tests or anything. You're, you're going with your gold pan and you're looking for mineable gold and you're sort of seeing like what's going to show up in your gold pan. And so based on the prospecting reports in the area, sure, there's no mineable gold on Oak Island. They've went around with their gold pan and nothing comes up. That doesn't mean there couldn't be trace amounts if we're following that 
uh, is possible to be tested. Okay, so if the test is fine, and if the, um, the location is fine, and this is when we're finding gold there, that means that we're finding treasure, and it doesn't mean that we're just finding natural gold. Um, so then what else could be the issue? Okay, so um, collecting your samples. Um, so uh, they've shown it multiple times on the show, them going around and collecting uh, water samples um, around the island. What they do is they'll drill like a, a well, like you drill for your hose, um, but it's just an exploratory well. And um, uh, they might like look at the soil or whatever that was in the well and analyze that, or maybe they're trying to drill into a, a cavern or whatever. But anyways, they have these wells, and then the wells naturally fill up with water. And so then they have a special tool they go and they dunk down into the bottom to get a sample of water, and then. Uh, um, and take the sample to the lab but whenever they're collecting the sample sometimes they have gloves on but then other times they don't have gloves on now if you're doing a test that's extremely sensitive for gold it's detecting tiny micro particles of gold then you definitely want to make sure you have gloves on every single time no matter what and you want to have make sure you have a fresh pair of gloves, and even even in some scenes, I noticed they were um, they were wearing uh, gloves, but the protocol they were using for handling the sample and loading it into um, the sample container and whatnot was just kind of sloppy. They were slopping it all over their gloves and whatnot, and just kind of getting it everywhere. Um, there's even one case where they collected a sample just in a Ziploc bag, and um, and took that off testing. Um, uh, there was one time where um, they they were doing the coring work where they're going there analyzing the different layers and um, they, got like a, they keep drilling down and finding blocks of wood and so they're thinking okay this is part of like some tunnel that they've dug and we're you know, we're getting onto the treasure. And, okay, well, well, let's test to see if there's any gold in the wood. Because the water soaks into the wood. So if we can test for the gold in the water, then we can test for the gold in the wood. But then, as soon as that sample became available on the table, the person grabbed it with their bare hand with their gold ring on it. And the test results came back positive that it had gold in it. Okay, so if this is even a thing, how would you even approach using this uh, gold testing tool to do it properly to actually see if you're finding... Um, gold. Okay. So the first thing you would need to do is a control test. And you always do this, so you have to make sure that your actual results are results. And that they make sense. So for something like this, what you'd have to do is you would go to place that you know for sure that people find gold and that there's gold in the water and you test the water and you make sure it has gold in it then you go somewhere where you know for sure that no one has ever found gold and you test the water there okay there's no gold in it then you take the water that you know has no gold in it and you put a piece of gold in it to soak it for however long and test the water and see if you can detect the gold in it. And 
in doing that, of course, you'd have to um, sort of blind test the lab in that they don't know which sample had the water with the gold in it. So there's a, a, a protocol and stuff you could follow there. Um, um, but okay, so we established that the test works. It's, that's what the control tests are for. Okay, so we know it works because we tested it where we knew there was gold, we tested it where we knew there wasn't gold, we tested where we specifically put gold in the water, and we demonstrated this test works. Now you can go test on Oak Island. But you also can't only test on Oak Island because you still need a control for Oak Island. So, because if you're just... You're just sort of in a in sort of a data void where your all your data is on Oak Island, so you'd have to take tests um, on the shore here. Well, do we find gold in the water here? Well, if you find gold in the water here, and well, no one's burying gold in the land here. Oh well, okay, then the gold in the water here is just natural. But if you're over here testing the land and you're seeing that. Um, there's no gold in the water, no gold in the water in Gold River. There's no gold in the water on the beaches and whatever else. Then you can say, okay, it, this is coming from treasure. But you can't say that the, the result is coming from treasure until you have a clean sample that wasn't touched by someone's hand wearing a gold ring. Until the sample, until you've proven that there is no... That you wouldn't even expect there to be gold particles there in the first place. And then you can say that it was there from treasure. That's science. That's why I love about science. 